Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be having a look at refraction. Um, now I've done videos before about the basics of refraction and how it works, but today we're going to be having a look at uh, one of the problems that you can get with refraction and, and how to fix it. So um, we'll demonstrate it first and then we'll show the fix. Um, and then you can kind of do that to your own project. So uh, big thanks to Deathray CG from the Discord, the Real-Time VFX Discord, who uh, sort of showed how to do this. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of publicize that. So uh, it's not my technique. Big thanks to them for, for helping out there and showing how that works. So <clears throat> I have here a simple refraction material, um, just a refraction value. I'm using the index of refraction. Uh, refraction. So since 5.2, I believe it is, um, you need to now set which refraction you'd like to use first, and then you have the refraction uh, available, and it shows you here what it is, index of refraction, and there's different types. Um, but there is a problem. So this is nice, this is smooth, don't know how well that's going to come through in the video, but um, there is definitely some refraction happening here. We've got an animated normal map, zero opacity, uh, and a refraction value. Now remember, a refraction value of 1 means no refraction. Uh, and a value of here, 1.2, we have nice smooth refraction everywhere, looks decent. Uh, but as I go more and more subtle, 1.1, uh, 1.05, um, there's still a little bit of refraction happening here, but it isn't happening everywhere. What's happening is, is it's actually getting clipped. Uh, oops, 1.04, 1.85, 1.01. Um, if I go down to 1.01, .01, there should be refraction here. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not showing us any refraction. So uh, what's actually happening is in the shader, it's trying to uh, to do the calculation. Do I need to do a refraction amount? Um, if so, if there's enough refraction there to make it worthwhile, do it. If not, then just skip that part of the uh, of the calculations. It's a bit of a, an optimization thing um, built into the engine and built into the refraction. Uh, and you can see here maybe a little um, it is affected by angles as well. So here at this sort of shallow angles, well, you can just about, let's say again, it probably isn't going to come through in the video. The whole point of this is it's quite uh, quite subtle saying, well, if it's too subtle, just don't bother with it. It's not going to make any uh, make any difference. Let's just not bother. Um, so let's have a look first at the shader. So if you go to your um, installation directory, um, so Unreal Engine, here I've installed this to my Epic Games folder. You need 5.1 um, engine shaders private. Uh, there's a shader file here called distortion common. Uh, and if we just open that up uh, in Notepad, this is the section we're interested in. So this is what it looks like when you first install the engine. Um, and there are various things happening, bits of math to define the refraction. But the bit we're interested in is this one here, if try to clip. So try to clip is a, uh, a function. Um, if that is true, or a parameter I should say, I guess, if this is true, then try and do this. Um, and it's doing some maths comparing, basically, what does it say here? Um, the distortion distance squared is too small to be noticed. Uh, and this value here, um, this 100 thousandth, I think it is, um, very, very small, uh, but unfortunately not small enough for very, very subtle refractions. Um, if I just lose a couple of zeros from that and save, uh, and I'm just going to recompile my material. What we should find, if I do this at 1.4, 1 1.2, 1, 1, should, oh, if I do it in the right one, excuse me, I've got two versions here open, one's 5.1 and one's 5.2. So if you're making edits, make sure you're doing them in the correct engine version. Uh, and there we go. Now I should be able to see that now my clipping is happening at a much higher value, 1.2. Um, and you can kind of see the problem here now. So I've got value of a fraction of 1.2, um, which should be plenty of refraction, but because my clipping value is now higher, if I slow this right down, you can kind of see, especially up here in the sky, the refraction is kind of on or off. Um, and it's not like a nice, smooth, perfect thing the whole time. Um, and that's the problem we're getting now. We're going to get low enough values that maybe we can live with it. That's the whole point of this optimization in the first place. Um, but for your own work, if you are doing very, very subtle refractions and you want to kind of up this limit, um, we want to be a way to be able to do that. And that's what I'm going to do next. So um, you could do exactly what I've just done and just go in and change that value. Um, if I undo 
that's the default. If I had another couple of zeros in and save, and then have to make a change here to recompile the shader. Now 1.2 is giving us nice good values. If I go to 1.02, I'm not sure how well that's going to come through in the recording, especially after it's been YouTube compressed, but you might have to take my word for it. There's definitely compression, compression. there's definitely refraction happening here. 1.01, .01. yeah, fine, 1.001, .001. is that going to be? That's too small, 1.005. So really, really tiny amounts of refraction now are definitely still having an effect where if I change my clipping back to the default, save and compile, that's now not doing anything. So um, that's one way to fix it, making that change in your um, in your shader file. Uh, that will apply to everywhere though. So if you're making making multiple materials in your in your project and you've got some refraction that's fine, some refraction wants to be really high res, you maybe don't want to make this change everywhere. If you do it globally, it's going to maybe not cause problems, but it is wasting performance. There's a reason this is an optimization that's been put in. Um, it's not too expensive, but every little helps. Um, and so what we can do instead of making a change here and just changing it globally, if I completely undo back to this, um, we can add an extra override, uh, an extra, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, an extra define. Um, so I'm not going to go too deep into shader files and things, um, but basically we can define an extra command, an extra parameter, um, and then we can choose to use that in our material and it will have two options here. So if the override distortion clip value is set to true, we're going to use the more high accuracy for the distortion. And if it's set to false, we're gonna use the, use the low accuracy one. So I'm just gonna temporarily make this really low accuracy so we can really see the difference. Um, and then save this. Uh, I'll copy and paste this into the comments below. So you can just grab and copy and paste it there. Um, if you wanna do this change in your own project. But, um, but yeah, we have now two, uh, values here, one very high and one very low, um, which we're going to recompile our material. Oops. Compile our material. Uh, and now we need to set that extra define in here. So um, let's use a large value here. You can see it's either uh, on or off because we've temporarily turned up the... Uh, the um, so to do that, we're going to use a custom node. So if we create a custom node, this is a way of injecting custom HLSL into our uh, material. So uh, everything that we make with nodes compiles to HLSL. Um, if we want to use things that are unavailable in nodes uh, or um, other custom things, things like loops or something like this, where we're including an additional define, um, we can do that with the custom node. Sometimes it's just easier to, to work in HLSL. Um, there are optimizations to working with nodes though. So Unreal is, is designed for node-based workflows. Um, so you don't necessarily want to use these too much. And we won't go too deep into that, but uh, we can cover that in a, in a future video maybe. But um, yeah, so custom node, here it is. Um, we want to have an input. I'm gonna give this a name, uh, refraction. Doesn't really matter what the name is. Um, but we are now going to output. Uh, and so the output type here, it's a float coming in. We're gonna output a float as well. Uh, and the code, all we're gonna do is nothing. So we're going to return refraction and then semicolon to finish the line. So, so it's literally one line of code, basically just saying take the input and then give it as the output. Uh, but what's the important thing is we're gonna have in here the, an additional define so if I enable that, I can have an additional define name, define value. Well, if I go back to my code, the define is called this. If overwrite distortion clip, I can just copy and paste that into here. I'm gonna set that to one. So without using this node, we are getting our refraction clipping. You can see that hard edge there. Um, if I plug this in and recompile, what we should get now is we're using the high res um, refraction values. So uh, in here we've got our two sets of values. We probably don't want this to be quite as clipped as it is here. We want to go back to the default. Well that's fine. Uh, but now basically we can go into our shader, into our material, um, apply an additional define in our shader um, and that will uh, let us to pick the higher res or higher quality uh, refraction. Um, and if I go down to 1.01 .01, definitely seeing a little bit of subtle refraction 
Whereas if I plug that straight in, and not use the extra define, I'm seeing nothing. So uh, if you do want really subtle refractions, you have to make that change. So as I say, up to you. If you want to make it globally, just make the change. If you want to have it as, a, as an option to enable, um, you can do that as well. Last thing I would do, uh, rather than using this as a custom node, if I just copy that and create a new function, uh, material function, mf high q refraction. And I'll just drop that in there. So rather than having to remember all of these steps, we can just make a, um, a function for this. Have an input refraction value scalar. And there we are. Um, so now if I want to use this, let's just expose it, give it a title or a description. Uh, enable high quality refraction. There we go. Um, and now if I go back to my refraction material, I can delete this and replace it with a high quality refraction function. Just so that we don't need to remember all of the extra steps. And there we are. Okay, hope that is interesting. Um, quite a useful thing if you are running up against this um, refraction clipping limit. Uh, it's here in the shader file. Distortion common is the name of the shader file. As I say, I'll copy and paste this, uh, this code into the, the comments below. Um, so you can just copy and paste it into your shader file. And then the important thing is to use a custom node. Make sure that you're returning the input so that it's not really doing anything in terms of editing the material um, and including this additional define. And that there, the name will be the same as the name here. And we'll trigger that when required. Okay, right. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, as always, big thanks to the patrons who support the channel, who make all this possible. Uh, if you would like to become a patron, you can check the links below. Um, also, uh, I have a materials course out, um, first of a few long form courses that I've been working on. So you can find links for that as well below. Uh, do go and check that out if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine and specifically materials. That's what's out now. So um, yeah, cool. Look forward to seeing all the work that you do with this and I'll see you all next time.